shot the ball well enough and picked up a giant win. Absolutely. And when you consider the fact that they only scored 54 points and were able to win, that shows the maturity of this North Carolina team. And we're underway as Miami wins the opening tip. This is a battered and bruised Miami team down a couple of starters into this game. It's going to be straight uphill. They may need a miracle, and it might start with that guy, North Chad O'Meara, who comes in averaging 17 and 10. I can remember North Chad O'Meara's best game in a Miami uniform. He scored 33 points at Notre Dame, and the game started exactly like this one did. Look out, this could be a big performance for O'Meara, who is playing against another preseason first team all ACC. They got down the lane, sweeping in can't connect. Miami at 15 and 13 without the services of Wooga Poplar and Nigel Pack. Two starters. They combined for almost 28 a game. Cleveland going airborne. Can't hit it. And Elliot Cadeau comes out of the pack with it to trigger the break. And let's see what's up with R.J. Davis in this game. That's a great way to start. As you look at the starting lineup for North Carolina, and Davis was just one for 14 against Virginia. So he's already equal that. Baycott locking up defensively. Here's the kick out for Cleveland. Long one coming from Miami and off the front of the iron, and that won't fall for Watson. Christian Watson getting a chance to start this game because of all the injuries. I'm still looking, talking about the fact that R.J. Davis answered your question. You wanted to see what's up with R.J., and he showed you really quickly. <laughs> yeah, it took about four seconds. Averaging 21 points a game. The guy for I think both of our money is going to win player of the year in this conference. Despite a rough day on Saturday, here's Ingram from the corner and can't hit it. And it's tapped to Cleveland. And actually, Cleveland, after a bout with food poisoning, getting back in the lineup the last game. But it's just been a dreadful health situation for Jim Laranega. He just can't get a starting lineup on the floor day after day. Otherwise, you really have to wonder what kind of year it would have been for Miami. Yeah, well, this Miami team had a lot of expectations coming into the season, but this is now 11 games in ACC play where they have missed at least one starter in the starting lineup. And unfortunately for the Canes, it's actually two starters here tonight that won't make the start this game. Oh, that's a time. And that's Ryan from the corner. In and out. He had a great day on Saturday. He had 18 points. He hit six threes. Ingram close. And that won't drop. Big battle for the rebound and a save for the Canes. And here they come. Oh, confidence right there for Bouchon. George pulling up on the break. Man, this is a young man who has played his way most likely to an all-rookie performer in the ACC this season, OB. 40% from three is Ryan. Feeling it. That's He's really shooting the ball a lot better lately. Yeah. Let's talk about who's confident right now. <laughs> Quarterback Ryan is the guy that's confident right now, OB. He is 14 of 27 in the last three games from beyond the three point arc. And of course, he was the leading scorer against Virginia with those six made three point field goals. And Heels fans love the timing, right? As we close in on the NCAA tournament, first the ACC tournament. But there's George again. You wonder why the NBA scouts flooded the arenas that he's playing in? Absolutely, OB. And you and I were on the call for when Miami went to Virginia and Keyshawn George turned his ankle three minutes into that game. The missed the remaining 37. It was a bad performance. And that started the losing streak for Miami. But he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Ingram, no. Omir with the rebound. He gets 10 a game. He's on the attack, trying to drive it inside, and a good stop there. 16 19 to play here in the first half. The theme of the day could be the three OB. As a matter of fact, all five field goals have been made from beyond the three point arc for both of these teams. Cormac Ryan knocking one down to Keyshawn, Keyshawn George, knocking down his second three already to start the game. And he's got a world of talent. Upsides tremendous for George. He had 16 against Georgia Tech in a loss on Saturday. Or Chad O'Meara banging, banging on Baycott. No. But you see the difference between being 6'11 and being 6'7. North Chad O'Meara just as strong as Armando Baycott, if not stronger, but the length of Baycott still is allowing him to defend that opportunity. Ryan open again at this time. And tip to Cleveland who wants to start a break here for Miami. Miami just 6 and 11 in conference play. Hopes are so high this year, but. The injury bug has been devastating. Davis working at baseline. What a quick step on the reverse. He blew right by Matthew.
Matthew Cleveland. But I love the fact that R.J. Davis didn't fall in love with the three. He recognized that he, there was no one there but behind Cleveland to help once he beat his man. As a great offensive player, you're never concerned about the guy in front of you. It's who's behind him to help. Watson giving off for Bensley Joseph. Gets himself an open look, and it's in and out. Rebound fought for. And Pat Driscoll had the right call here. It was a deflection, definitely. 15.07 to go here in the first half. R.J. Davis off to a quick start after a bad day on Saturday. And for more, let's toss it to Angel. Guys, R.J. Davis has been the tone setter, the floor general, and the constant for the Tar Heels this season. And while we praise his ability to be a bucket, we must also look at and acknowledge the work that he has put in to become the ACC's leading scorer. He told me, I've been patient throughout my career. This year, it is his time, and he didn't want to leave having any regrets of what could have been. So in the summer, he adopted 6 a.m. workouts with the manager. He loved the results so much that he continues those workouts today. Yes, even now when they have back-to-backs, he said, we changed it to 9 o'clock this morning because of him wanting to balance being a student athlete. He said after the Duke game, he realized he was sped up. Now he understands the ebbs and flows of the game, when and where to attack. Guys, he's prepared for the moment, and he's owning it. He absolutely is at RJ, forgive me, Angel. And one thing he did not say was that it was his team because it was fortunate when Armando Baycott told Coach Hubert Davis, hey, I'm recognizing it's, it's RJ's team now. <laughs> Coach Davis told Armando, wait, it was never your team in the first place for you to give it to RJ. How are you doing that? This is our team. A little re-gifting there. Now <laughs> the baseline, here's Baycott on the spin and pushed. Foul here against Miami. They'll go against Nowako, the 6'10 freshman. See the bench for the Miami Hurricanes. Nigel Pack, Wilka Poplar both sitting in street clothes. And of course, you're talking about 28 points per game missing. But not just that, the threat of Nigel Pack's shooting ability often opens up so many other things for his teammates. And we've got a great look, courtesy of Bacon. Grabs the lead. And Nigel Pax missed four straight games. He missed one all of last year. Nor Chad O'Meara missed only one game last year. That was the Duke loss. These two guys out. A giant blow for Coach Laranega. But the odd thing about Miami is they haven't had a single sub get hurt. <laughs> all the starters. <laughs> well, we don't want that to happen. We don't want anyone getting hurt. Indeed, the slam. Loco getting free underneath the big freshman. Yeah, nice job by Bensley Joseph attacking the paint, getting into the lane, and finding the Loco. And the one thing about this Miami team, regardless as to who's on the floor, they're going to compete. This team has not packed it in. Airmailed by Withers, right to Baycott, though. No reset of the shot clock, of course. It's down to eight. Davis, who hit a quick shot, goes airborne for two more. He has seven. R.J. Davis attacking the paint, and he has a great middle game. That's one of the areas where he's improved his game. Of course, always been able to shoot the three, but what he does with defense run him off the three-point line has been special this year. Cleveland making a move, denied by Baycott, who sealed him. Ten to get off a shot, around the back, Joseph. Here's George. George backing away, shot clock down to four. Through the paint, no. Rebound for Withers to trigger the break here for North Carolina. OB, but you hear the ovation from the North Carolina faithful based upon the defensive stop. They're going to say no basket and wave that off. So no hoop. As Baycott took the shove in the back on his way to the 10. The Woko second foul. And Jim Laradega. 740 career wins, and since he came to Miami, he's won you know, six or seven times combined at Duke and North Carolina. Nobody's won more on the road against those two than Jim Laranega has up against Hubert Davis, year number three. At 21 points a game, his star Davis averages rings a bell. That's what Hubert averaged his senior year for North Carolina. I played against Hubert that year. He was a bucket. That North Carolina team was amazing, but of course, it seems to me that all those Dean Smith North Carolina teams were amazing. Run iron, and here comes Trimble with it. North Carolina trying to get on one of their patented runs. So far, Miami has kept them at bay. Ryan with a three. And 
Toby, that's what I'm interested to see. How does Miami respond to those runs? You know what's going to happen here in Chapel Hill, but how does Miami respond when it does happen? Omir going to work. And the foul will go the other way. That'll be against Miami. And number one for Norchad. Jalen Withers has had this battle before. The only thing is, he did it in a Louisville uniform a season ago. Now going up against Norchad O'Meara and understands O'Meara is going to play like a bull in a china shop. His body in great guarding position, takes the contact, and goes down picking up the offensive foul. Well, he's seeking out contact all the time. That's his game. In the corner. Withers to the baseline. A blocking foul. Take us to a timeout. 11:56 to go here at Chapel Hill in the first half, and the Tar Heels by two. We're in the security business. Fourth year reserves that Jim, that Jim Larinaga had coming off the bench a season ago. So with the injuries that they've sustained this year, now the guys coming off the bench and giving quality minutes are freshmen and sophomore who haven't played many minutes. The swing to Ryan for a triple. Oh, big rebound there by Withers. He earned that one, a 6 9 grand out of Charlotte. And we talk a lot about Cormac Ryan and especially Harrison Ingram, but we forget oftentimes about Jalen Withers and what he has been to this North Carolina team. He single handedly was one of the main reasons why they won the game against his former school in Louisville. And there he is once again making a play, just trying to box out and picks up the foul on A.J. Casey getting possession back for North Carolina. So it's Carolina by four. Casey picking up number one. North Carolina only shot 32 percent on Saturday, but they held Virginia to 28 percent, including 17 percent in the first half. But I thought the difference in the game down the stretch was the offensive rebounding that Carolina did, particularly Armando Baker who had five. And that's a staple of North Carolina basketball, as is scoring quickly as Elliot Cadeau gets to the basket, able to make an acrobatic shot. But one of the things you're always going to see from North Carolina, one, they lead the ACC in rebounding, but offensive rebounding, as long as Armando Baycott is on the floor, is always going to be a tremendous threat. Foul off the play, off the ball with 10.53 left in the half. We'll go against Carolina coming up next on ESPN. We will take you to Fort Worth, Texas, number 15, Baylor, squaring off against TCU. That's following our game here on ESPN. Foul on Seth Tremble. Baylor going down this weekend to a tough Houston team who is now entered number one in the country. And of course, anytime you think about Houston at number one, and not that they haven't been there before or since, but it always takes me back to the Fox Lama Jamma. Boy, look at this. And with the shot clock almost to zero, George flipped it up there very casually and gets the basket. You got didn't fall very far. Despite a big they, loss. They Chris. shouldn't. Yes. <laughs> they number absolutely two. should not. I mean, again, for them to drop down one. And it wasn't like they got blown out by a bad team. They got beat at great the top of ranked team as well. Tough place to win. Rebound knocked around, controlled by Miami. Cleveland out of the pack with it. Wants to drive it all the way. No. North Carolina defending that 10 on the other end. Here's Ryan stepping in. And finally a whistle there. That'll go the other way. That'll be against Cormac Ryan. And Keyshawn George getting it done on both ends of the floor. Picking up the offensive foul. Stepping in front of Cormac Ryan. But offensively going back to the days of ice. A little bit of finger roll there. But you got to get you got to get more loft on that. And a little more flick of the wrist well, to make it the Iceman type. Nobody did it like George. Absolutely not. And I'm not sure. You know, if everyone wants to talk about today's players are more skilled. I don't think they have watched what guys in, like George Gervin were doing. You, you can't, what Kareem Abdul Jabbar was doing. Come on, come on. Scott Hook, Julius Irving. I mean, to be able to finger roll in the paint like that, that, that is funny to me when you talk about guys are more skilled than those guys. Those guys were certainly artists. Joe Bay kicks out for Joseph. Nice fake to get himself open and sticks it. Drains the three. Hensley Joseph has stepped up significantly for this Miami team as of late, becoming more of a scorer. But when you play against the Heels, 
you have to get back. Defensive transition is so important. They score within the first three to four seconds of the shot clock. RJ Davis going off nine points early. Quite a recovery. Took just a few seconds. Amir short with his jump shot. Last time they met earlier this season, Davis went off for 25 against Miami. Looking for Baycott, but thrown away right in the hands of Joe Bay. Here's George again around the back. George wants to heave up a three. Got it! He's having himself a time here, Obi. This is the first time Keyshawn George has played in Chapel Hill, and he's enjoying himself. Angel's got more on that. Absolutely. He's playing free. Just going back to him being an international player from Switzerland, he talked about the differences in life overseas, and now he said, back home, I had to wash my own clothes, finding his own meals, and finding different ways to equ equip his body for competition. He said, as a student athlete at Miami, there are a few more hands on deck to make sure most of that checklist is handled. Coach Laranega said, there's no secret why NBA scouts are coming to see him perform. He's smart. He has a different level of maturity and overall pro with everything he approaches. Guys, we're seeing it. But Angel, you lost me when you said watch his own clothes. He doesn't have to watch his own clothes anymore? Is that a, is that a perk of being a, a college athlete now? I would say so. I mean, I, I do not want to watch clothes at all. And <laughs> to go back home to think about it now is really scaring me. So I would think so. I've been washing my own clothes for about 25 years. 25? A, a long, long time. That's all? 25? Well. Because I've been watching mine for over 30, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how that works. <laughs> and we need to stop whining. Here's Davis. Push on, and yeah! that foul will be against North Carolina underneath. And they're going to get Armando Baycott on that one. And Obi, I can tell you, over the last four-plus seasons, officials have told me time and time again, Armando Baycott is one of the most difficult players to officiate in college basketball because he is so physical and oftentimes he's using his body not necessarily pushing but using his body to get in position to come up with those offensive rebounds. And Miami has lost six in a row as mentioned they're really beaten up down two starters tonight but they are with North Carolina step for step here in the first half. Amir running into Baycott and pops three. Look at Davis look at the speed on Davis and he can't hit it though the handle as it rolled off that right palm and he will flick it out of bounds so it will be Miami ball and we go to timeout all tied up 1919 Miami staying right there you know the wrong side of the bubble right now will be back to you Kevin said, thank you very much, guys. Hardest working men in show business right there as we check out the ACC standings. North Carolina, 13-3. and three. Duke slipping one back. Virginia with six losses. Wake Forest with six. But Wake Forest in the NCAA tournament, Joe Lenardi says, right now, we say about time. Uh, I believe that there will be six teams in the ACC in the NCAA tournament when it's all said and done. I would agree. But, you know, when you think about what the Pitt Panthers are doing, but they have a huge test coming up this week at Clemson. One of the areas where Pitt has been so successful. They're six and three on the road this year. George lost the handle. Davis there to scoop it. Davis wants to attack. Great job defensively by Bensley Joseph getting back and defending without fouling. Oh, that's great hands about to go. Now get up, RJ. Davis finishes. Oh. I got to boo that one. He can dunk. It was anticlimactic. Yeah, it really was. Much. He can dunk. But he has 11 points here in the first half. Oh, we know he can score. Crowd wants to be a factor now here at Chapel Hill. They've got the heels on for three consecutive games beginning tonight. George will back it away. Now in. Gets the shot off, but it doesn't touch anything. He thought he got hit on the hip. There's no whistle there. Let's see if Baycott gets involved. And the battle between O'Meara and Baycott has been a huge one today. George had O'Meara doing a great job. Three-quarter fronting Armando Baycott, not allowing him to see any passing lane. Joseph tried to pull his way through, and it'll go the other way. That foul will be against Miami. Elliot Cadeau, really nice D moments ago. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the great hands by Elliot Cadeau as Cleveland tries to sweep over you see, and that's no contact there. That's great hands by Elliot Cadeau, who's able to knock the basketball away. Six turnovers already for Miami, where they have gotten so much better. 19 assists, only five turnovers again. They lost at home to Georgia Tech, and that was an area where Miami struggled for the majority of the season. 
including tonight in 11 out of 18 ACC games. Miami's had at least one starter out. So far, they're two and eight. First 10, sweeping it again is Davis. RJ off to a tremendous start tonight. RJ seeing open lanes, which he did not see at all against Virginia on Saturday. Virginia, of course, playing in the pack line. They shut off all those driving opportunities, especially when you're at the top of the scouting floor. Lemire around and out. Boy, that was in the cylinder. 23-19, North Carolina. Big pot looking for room. Nice job there by Joseph to spring free and steal it. And a reach-in foul by Cadeau. That's the second or third turnover we've seen trying to get the basketball inside to Baycott all the times trying to force it inside. And we have a women's basketball big Monday matchup for you on ESPN 2. Number 13 Colorado taking on number 8 UCLA. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern at 6 o'clock Pacific. Miami very much staying connected. Against all odds so far tonight. Look at this guy over here. Inside, he's denied. But Baycott doing a great job defensively outside of the opening three point field goal. Over having a hard time getting anything to go against Baycott on the inside. He got batted around and picked up by Obeer. Miami's a good enough shooting team. They can hang around all night, even with the injuries. They hit 46%, 37% from three in a timeout. Jim Lanega wanted to talk it over because of timeout. I think a lot of it also has to do he wants to get Keyshawn George back on the floor. Life, diabetes, there's no slowing down. Each day is a unique. Pickups around college basketball, and really North Carolina's had a couple of them in Ingram and Ryan. I know both of them spent time at Stanford. Hunter Salas, Saturday against Duke, 29. He had one of the best games of the year in the ACC. Joe Girard going to Clemson. He's made a big difference for a team that's going to the NCAA tournament. He absolutely has. And he's the guy that's the finisher for the Clemson Tigers. When P.J. Hall does everything else, Joe Girard's the guy that finishes it just like Matthew Cleveland finishes a great find from beyond the arc that makes it a one-point game, knocking down now the sixth three-point field goal already in this game for Miami. Davis to dribble down, fires. Great touch. 16 points for RJ. Well, we knew that he wouldn't go one for 14 again. <laughs> and Miami defensively has not been great this year. So I know this is a game where RJ Davis is kind of licking his chops, recognizing he could have a big time performance. Cleveland will teardrop. No. Rebound by Baycott. Comes in averaging 15 points, 10 rebounds a game. He has five so far in this one. Chad O'Meara with a personal foul. And take a look at what he did on Saturday. Now just 12 points, one for 14 shooting it. And tonight already seven for 11. But what was so impressive about RJ in that one for 14 performance, even though it wasn't going well for him offensively, he didn't force things. He didn't get outside of character. He didn't take shots he shouldn't be taking. He shared the basketball, but because of his presence on the floor, Cormac Ryan got a lot of open looks and knocked down six threes, which was the difference maker between those two teams. Both teams only made 16 field goals. The difference was Virginia only made a handful of threes, where Cormac Ryan made six alone. Davis, one of the best foul shooters in the country. Ryan on the bench right now. We had him after the game. And tried to pry him loose on Duke. Yeah. Coming down the line. And like, what about Duke in that final showdown? He said, all I'm thinking about is Monday night in Miami. Professional answer from a guy that's like 35 years old playing college basketball. So, no, I wouldn't have expected anything different from my guy, Cole Mack Ryan. I love this young man. Great family. Got time to spend chance to spend time with his father, Mike, mom, Rosemary, who made the trip from Charlottesville down to watch the game on Monday night as well. Joseph with a step back three. Got it. That rattles on. And Besley Joseph is confident right now, OB. He's 
he's one of those guys, he's so competitive, he's thinking to himself that the fact that, hey, okay, no, there's no Nigel Pack, there's no Wooga Papa, we still have a chance. That's the way Benzley Joseph is built, and he's going to give Miami everything he can a chance to win this game. Bangkok slams it as he rolls to the iron. His first basket tonight. But Obi, even though the highlight was Bangkok's dunk, how about the six foot guard Joseph going over trying to block it? How about Miami? Seven out of 11 from three tonight to stay in it. Down the lane, Watson. Now denied by Withers. Who went for the block, kept him away from the basket. Take out again, turns to the basket, but lost it. And the crowd is howling for a foul, but no whistle. Miami's been raining triples. Here's another one, and another one goes, this time by Omir. But oftentimes, when you're out, man, that is the answer, and you've got a number of guys on the floor for Miami. We've seen it from Omir, Bensley Joseph, as well as Matthew Cleveland. They've got a number of guys that can shoot the basketball for three. Keyshawn George still on the bench as he gets up now at the end of the game. Davis has the pass block, and he kicked it out of play. So it goes back over to the Canes. We talked about how competitive Bensley Joseph is. Even though he's 10 inches shorter, he's still going to try it. However, no avail against Baycott. All right. Greenberg, you know that's why you ask. It's absolutely a concern. If you go back to the game against Virginia, Reese Beekman went into the paint, scored over top of R.J. Davis and Elliott Cadeau multiple times. It's going to be a factor for North Carolina, but that's the reason why Hubert Davis has Seth Trimble on the floor right now guarding Keyshawn Drew. The Jim Laranega's team right there, step for step with North Carolina, despite missing two starters tonight. George is a big reason why. The three-pointer is a bigger reason. They're 8 out of 12, Miami, from the three-point line. Four different players have hit a triple. They absolutely have, but that's the reason why when George comes back in, Hubert Davis counters with Seth Trimble, who, although he may be shorter, is stronger than Keyshawn George and presents a different challenge defensively. Olmir hooks it up there. No. Rebound picked off by Ingram. You know, watching Coach L at practice today, it would be very easy to kind of feel sorry for yourself. You're down so many key players. You've lost six in a row. He was coaching the heck out of the thing at practice. There was give no quarter today as Ryan slams on the brakes and drops in a short one. OB, there's no active coach in college basketball in Division I that has coached more games than Jim Laranega. That number is now 1,289. He has seen a little bit of everything. He's seen the highs, he's seen the lows. He's not going to get out of character regardless as to who he has out there. He's gonna to continue to coach his team. And this is one of the reasons why this gentleman should be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, now in his second year on the ballot. So Trimble with the foul. Pack out tonight, Nigel Pack. He's missing up four straight games. Poplar out as well. Ruga Poplar with a twisted ankle. He's averaging 14 points a game. Also unable to go. Couldn't agree with you more about Jim Laranega. He should have been in the big Hall of Fame a while ago. Well, he's on the ballot. This is now so oh, slammed by Matthew Cleveland. The second year for Coach Laranega on the ballot this year. And I don't think taking his team to the Final Four a season ago hurt his chances at all. I don't think so. Two different schools. He has taken to the final four. Cadeau zips the pass to Ingram open. Oh, they got beat everybody to it. It's knocked away from him, so Carolina will have it. Elliot Cadeau has now thrown two pinpoint cross the body, cross court passes to that corner. One to Cormac Ryan, one to, as we see Matthew Cleveland coming down the lane with the slam. But the passing of Cadeau, of Cadeau has been very impressive. Oh, a nice strike on the inbounds to Cadeau. Lightning quick, and that time Cadeau moving without the basketball to underneath out of bounds. That's a cardinal sin on defense. You've got to take away the middle first, never give up a layup. Cleveland again, really trying to take over offensively. He's fouled on the floor, said Ted Valentine. 43.6 to go in the half. And here's the next Super Tuesday college basketball doubleheader coming away, Mississippi State. We'll take on number 16, Kentucky, at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then it'll be Texas and Texas Tech. Both games right here on ESPN and the app.
Foul will be on Cormac Ryan of a two. Joseph with a crossover, scoops it in for two. Hensley Joseph has been the offensive catalyst as of late for the Miami Hurricanes. Eight points now for Joseph as he's knocked down a couple of threes and also attacking the basket, challenging the bigs for North Carolina. Goodell, back pass here for Davis. Got it. His big half continues with 21. Time for one more shot here for Miami before the break. They get it in the hands of Matthew Cleveland for three. And no, at the horn, it does not go. So at the break, give Miami a whole lot of credit. They're only down by five. And Miami's done it beyond the three-point arc shot. points. Miami made only four two-point shots and did not shoot a foul shot with all the time they spent outside. And we saw on Saturday it was actually Cormac Ryan who had 15 of North Carolina's first 26 points in that first half against Virginia. So they've seen that production before. And you've seen this before for R.J. Davis gets an easy bucket in the paint. So 23 for him already, and this is the biggest lead tonight for North Carolina. Miami coming out with outstanding energy. They got it to this guy, George, quite a bit. He'll misfire here that did not get to the rim. I think Armando Baycott got a piece of that one. And Baycott has to get that basketball, but he does it defensively and spreads the floor with Keyshawn George. Even though he's 6'8", he's a guard. You've got to get Baycott the basketball. Great recognition from Cormac Ryan. Getting the ball inside. Jim Laranega hopping off that bench and immediately asking for a timeout. North Carolina expands the lead 41 32, opening seconds of the second half. A typical insurance. Quick timeout for Miami to start the second half because Coach Laranega said the concern for him in the second half was finding the balance between guarding the bigs in the paint for the Tar Heels while also finding ways to slow down R.J. Davis, who had 21 in the first half. He said he was sensational. He is setting the pace. This is what we talked about at the top of the game. But he said right now we just have to find a way and see if we have the depth on our bench to finish at the rim, but also finding ways to defend. Miami just hit their ninth three-pointer. Omir burying that one. You know, Omir hit his third three-point field goal. He hasn't been able to do much of anything on the interior against Armando Baycott. But he's not pick up a foul right here. He's knocked down three threes in this game already. And we had an opportunity in the timeout to watch Jim Laranega at his best. And again, you see the smile has Bill Courtney laughing on the sideline again. He understands what his team is going through. It's hard to win in this league in general, but even more difficult when you don't have your full complement of players. Last year, he had a great team, took it all the way to the Final Four, and they were a healthy team, too. Incredibly so. Here's Ryan. Out of climb away and a rebound to Miami. Going back, Ryan caught the grenade on that one, OB. Shot clock going down. You catch it, you don't have much choice but to shoot it. Field goal percentages go way down taking those shots. Obeer didn't finish it, but he's a load in there. Ingram to Ryan. Ingram's open. He can nail that. And it's in and out. North Carolina's had some really good open looks. Is Joseph, and he'll bury it as he knocks down a two-pointer. Nesley Joseph had a solid first half now in double figures with 10 points. And North Carolina hasn't been able to separate from Miami. We asked what would be the case when North Carolina made that run. Miami has responded each time. Good over the back door, cut to lay it in. Nice find from Baycott. And a great screen, no help allowing Cadeau to get the easy layup. North Carolina has been unable to break away from an injury riddled Miami team tonight. The three pointer has kept the Hurricanes there. Obeer trying to drive past Baycott who bodies up on him and he'll get Baycott. That was with six on the shot clock. His second foul. Miami having lost six in a row. They fell at Coral Gables Saturday to Georgia Tech. One of the losses on the streak was to North Carolina two weeks ago. That was a very tight game. 75 72 is the final. That was a game where Nigel Pack had 18 first half points. Oh! 
Cleveland went for the dunk through the foul. So it'll be Matthew Cleveland going to the line where he, he makes 80 percent of his shots. And Coach K and Roy Williams rivals reunited. Tune in. ACC Network. That's coming up Wednesday. Really looking forward to that. You just saw Coach Williams in the hallway. You got a chance to talk to old Roy outside in the hallway. And that's a. West Durham is actually interviewing both Coach Williams. And again, we got we got to pause for a second because Roy is up because I believe there's chicken on the line here on a missed free throw. Not coming yet. But how about Coach Williams? How about oh, but no, we got crumble cookies. It's not chicken. It was chicken in the past. But how about Roy Williams up on the other side cheering on with the students, <laughs> trying to get everybody cookies? And Roy's always been a snacker. From the corner, can't hit it. And a whistle and a foul here. Or are they going to just separate these guys? Yeah, but yeah, that's a warning there from Ron Gruber. It, you know, it's the stuff that Roy couldn't do when he coached. He couldn't. He do that. couldn't hop out of a huddle and start, you know, get everybody going about cookies. Well, let me tell you what else he couldn't do. He couldn't sit down and do an interview with Coach K. That wasn't <laughs> going to happen either. So That's the fact sure. that we have rivals reunited coming up on Wednesday night, West Durham inter interviewing both those. Hall of Fame coaches who have done so much within this eight mile radius of each other. Two of those Mount Rushmore guys. Here's O'Meara straight on. Can't cash in. And a foul on the deck. We know somebody else who has a, an affinity for cookies. My partner. I mean, you know, Roy and I have shared Buster. a couple cookies. Yeah. You know, I, I play for I play for my guy Roy Williams, and we we both recognize our love for snacks. Roy's more of a popcorn guy. He's, 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 he's more of a popcorn guy right there, but you know, I'm a cookie guy, and and he knows how I got caught on camera with the cookies, but nobody mentions my partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing too. You're, you're a lot slender and everything. <laughs> In transition, here's Ryan to the baseline. And O'Meara with a foul. 43-38, North Carolina trying to shake Miami. Have not been able to do it. And North Chad O'Meara with foul number three, though. That's an important foul as Michael Inoko gets up to check in for North Chad O'Meara. And Armando Baycott hasn't been able to have much success offensively. With Omir on the floor, Omir's done a great job positionally guarding Baycott. But when you bring in the substitute, that's where you're going to see Hubert Davis look to get Baycott the basketball. Omir's had a terrific individual season. He's been a true star. On the inbounds, Ingram Kane tried to tip it, couldn't get it. Baycott got a great look. That's one he's going to be disappointed with later that he wasn't able to finish. Joseph and travel with it. A turnover for Miami. That's their eighth of the contest. And if you're just tuning in, Miami without two starters tonight, and not just any two starters, Luka Poplar and Nigel Pack, who both average 14 points per game and are huge for Jim Laranega, unable to go because of injuries. But not only is it that you don't have your guys in the starting lineup, now you're bringing your reserves and putting them in the starting lineup so you have even less of a bench. The bounce for Baycott. Working against George. Nice feed. Ryan can't get it to go, but he follows his miss for two. And give Cormac Ryan seven. Shot clock at 15. Davis trying to pry it free from George. He said a really fine night, the freshman. He dumps it off for Nwoko. Robinson. No. Great defense once again by Baycott, switching out, defending on the perimeter. And once again, this is where you got to get the basketball inside to the big guy. You see his number. You see that five. He has to get it. Baycott wants the ball. Cadeau on the spin. Got three. Rebound tipped out by Carolina. 45-38. The Tar Heels in front of Miami. And coming up on the other side of the break, a first for knowledge when we return. 
There's your biggie. Also a Tuskegee Airman. I mean, will you consider you're the first? I mean, 1936, you've got to be the first black player at many places. But when you consider that and then also a Tuskegee Airman, that's some type of resume to have. It's what's the first black scholarship men's basketball player at the University of North Carolina. Oh my God, Charles, a.k.a. Charlie Scott, who is a spectacular performer. That's such a great relationship with Dean Smith here. Yeah. 27.1 points per game. That's all, yeah. Cleveland. I think anybody who averages 27.1 could have a pretty good relationship <laughs> with Dean Smith. I would say so. But you know, one of the things, and I did a, a story with Charlie Scott, and he talked about Dean Smith taking him to church on his official visit at the urging of Coach Smith's pastor. And that was the difference maker. That's what made him choose to come to the University of North Carolina over so many other schools. That will count. Yep, Ingram will be headed to the line looking for three-point play. But we also have to mention Charles Scott, as we watch Harrison Ingram go to work in the post, where he was going to go, believe it or not, he was going to go play for Lefty Drizelle until that encounter. And shout out to the late great Lefty Drizel who passed recently, the Hall yeah. of Famer. But he had he said that he remembered having to make that call to Lefty, telling them he was coming to the University of North Carolina. And Lefty actually gave him his <laughs> blessing and said, I think you're making a good decision. But guess what? He was right. He was right. He was absolutely right. Well, North Carolina has opened up their biggest lead tonight. 48 to 38. Miami has done really a heroic job in many respects. Not to overstate it, but down two starters to hang in on this floor like this. Cleveland with a baseline, the scoop shot, but no. Would have been a beauty, but did fall. Yeah, Miami's responded for the majority of this game through these Carolina runs. That's what we question. But Foul now there. As Withers took the hit. Foul against Miami. So RJ needing to average 21 and a half to be the highest scoring season by a North Carolina guard since Charles Scott. Right now a 21 points a game on the nose. And another thing they have in common, both New Yorkers, even though Charles Scott with RJ Davis gets a bucket as we're talking about his scoring prowess. Charles Scott, a New Yorker, actually came to high school at Lorenberg Prep here in the state of North Carolina, which made him available to these North Carolina schools. And he talked a lot about coming to the South was also a culture shock for him in the 60s. That'll rattle in by Joseph as the three-pointers keep coming. And that's the way Miami can stay in this game. That's how they weathered the storm to this point, is being able to knock down the three ball. They're going to need much more of that as North Carolina starting to find some rhythm offensively. RJ was 25, by the way. Nearly pulled free. Ingram picks it up, goes airborne, and it's picked off. Joseph with the theft. Joseph, another three. They'll get a second opportunity. George thought about getting it right back up there. 13 minutes to play. Olvier looking in. A pass and a foul on the floor with eight seconds on the shot clock. Great decision by Olvier recognizing you got the 6'8 Keyshawn George with R.J. Davis trying to defend him in the post. You want to give him an opportunity. And that's the way you have to attack great scores. You've got to make them defend on the other end of the floor. You can't allow R.J. Davis to conserve his energy and just play offense. Davis' first foul. And RJ going to get a break now. Both RJ and Armando Baycott on the bench. Hubert Davis has trusted his bench a lot more this season than in seasons past. Trimble back on the floor. Omir. Oh. Tipped again and another whistle. And many more fouls here in the second half than we saw in the first half. 12 46 to play. Nine point lead for Carolina. We check with Angel. Hey guys, I was able to catch up with Harrison Ingram before the game, and he just talked about how connected this team is. He said, We are both on and off the court a brotherhood. Even in his first year, he's year here. He said he has two best friends on the team. I compared it to the game of Connect Four. He said, Yeah, a lot like that, but we can get 
connect for in like four different directions. Tweeper Davis said a big part of their success is the buy-in. Harrison said that he is the light in the room because other people have the buy-in in the locker room as well. He said when he was getting recruited, they didn't talk about shots. They didn't talk about money. They talked about winning, and everyone is bought into that, connected with that. Yeah, I referred to that, you know, recruiting Ingram as speed dating. Here's the second shot, and he made it, so no cookies yet for the North Carolina faithful. I'm catching a lot, a lot of heat on my phone right now about the three cookies in hand. I want to make sure that everyone knows that you did eat one of those cookies, though, B. <laughs> and it was delicious. Ryan can't connect from three-point land. But now I do understand why the, the crowd goes crazy, especially if they get a hold of the cookies we have. They're done good. Here's Ryan trying to pull his way to the basket. Can't finish. North Carolina has had many opportunities here to extend this lead. Omir has to get that. You've got Baycott on the bench. Jalen Washington trying to defend him. And that's easy pickings for Norchad Omir. When he runs the floor that hard, you've got to get him the basketball. Great decision by Bensley Joseph. And just like that, this is a six-point ball game. Got to remember, R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott sitting on the bench watching some of the reserves try to hold on to the lead. Omir taking aim at another double-double. He leads to more boards, but he has 14 over the top. Intended for Washington, knocked away by Miami. The give for Cleveland, and he lays it in. And Miami sticking right there, an 8 nothing run. Eight turnovers from North Carolina, just like that. Hubert Davis getting Armando Baycott back to the scores table. Will come into this game after the timeout. And Miami right now, they want to keep action going to see if they can cut into this lead even more. Ingram. Washington had the rebound in hand, lost it. Saved there along the baseline by Miami. Three here would go a long way, OB. Bensley Joseph is open on this corner. Knocked away by Ingram. He got to it. He stayed in bounds. And he'll lay it in. He tipped on that line. But we highlighted Harrison Ingram and all that he does for this North Carolina team. Bensley Joseph had a wide open three point field goal that Harrison Ingram took away that opportunity and turned it into points on the other end. George trying to answer. Tipped out by Carolina. 10 35 left. And we've got a timeout. A momentum changing play. Miami had momentum until a clear the cobwebs. They have to send my guy Mark into concussion protocol, OB. We got to make sure he's okay over there, but he's got, sticking in. Got the thumbs up. There you go. Mark will carry on. He's a warrior. Lots of bounces up top. Omir will launch it. And misfired there. And it had not touched the iron, so that's a shot clock violation. Only thing would have been better if Mark had jumped up and yelled at Ted Valentine. That's a charge. You got to call that. That would have made it. the call. Come on, Ted. Yes. 246. There's my guy, TV, Teddy Valentine. Yeah, good crew here with Ted and Ron Gruber and Pat Driscoll working our big Monday. North Carolina has been working all night trying to break away from Miami. They have been unable to do it. The Hurricanes have really been deadly beyond the three point line. They've made 10 out of 19 to stay connected. And that's the way it has to be when you're under man. We mentioned Miami playing without two starters. Davis, too strong this time. Bensley Joseph with another rebound, the opportunity to get out into transition. And if you're Miami, you want to see if you can score quickly before North Carolina gets back down. But of course, a great option has always been to get the ball in the hands of Premier as well. Man, is he tough. When he wants to score it down there, he's going to score it. He has 13. Well, he's been able to use his advantage on the perimeter against Baycott. He hasn't had success against Baycott in the post, but his three-point shooting and driving off the bounce has given him great opportunity. Davis again, and he got hit as he attempted a three-pointer. So RJ is headed to the line, and did he hurt that elbow? It looked like he did. Back to Amir. Omir off the bounce, really looking as though he's going to go dribble handoff, and then recognizing Baycott trying to block the shot, goes reverse, uses the glass very well, and uses the rim as a screen to be able to keep Baycott away from blocking the shot to get the bucket. Bensley Joseph with foul number four. 
That's a big foul because Bensley Joseph has really been the catalyst here for Miami in the second half. But it's not so bad when you're Jim Larinaga to put in Keyshawn George when Bensley Joseph gets in foul trouble. Right. Three for Davis. And coming in next on ESPN. We take it to Fort Worth, Texas. Number 15, Baylor, squaring off against TCU. That is right around the corner. Number two for RJ. He'll sink that. And another one coming, 27 and counting. Obi, if you look at Miami's lineup right now, there are two guys who started the season as starters for the Hurricanes. Matthew Cleveland, North Chattel Mill. There are three guys on the floor as they give up an offensive rebound on a missed free throw by R.J. Davis, which is a rarity in itself. That's a blocking foul against Miami. But there are three guys that have had games where they didn't even play. Sakai Robinson and Christian Watson have had games where they don't even get into throughout this season. Keyshawn George, of course, starting the season out coming off the bench. He's grown as a player, but that's exactly where Coach Larinaga and his staff have been throughout this season. Symbol drives, lays it in and draws the foul as well. One of the best moves of the night for the 6-3 sophomore. And he has the ability to slash, to get to the paint. But how about the nice find from Elliot Cadot catching Keyshawn George with his back turn and his head turn Allowing Seth Trimble to get downhill, get the bucket, the harm, and an opportunity. <laughs> I think we've determined that today. You know, I will work for snacks. So get to hang out with Dickie V at the crib and have snacks, watching basketball. What could be better? It'll be Trimble to the line here, about nine and a half to go. He makes 63% of his foul shots, sophomore from Wisconsin. OB, no. Let me tell you what's going to happen. After the game, when I walk out, Zep Trimble's going to be back over with his parents who are in the stands. And he's going to see me and put his head down because he told me he was going to go dunk on somebody. I thought he might that last one. I thought he was going to, and he knows that he has let me down, even though he got a major three points for his team. good nine minutes to go to make up for it. Slapped away. Carolina forcing the turnover. Cadeau will lean in. Blocked by O'Meara. That was a great job defensively. That's how you guard a two-on-one perfectly by North Chad O'Meara. He never allowed Elliott Cadeau to have a passing lane to deliver the basketball to Armando Baycott. Perfect two. You see how he stays back and then at the last moment decides to block the shot, taking away Baycott and denying an opportunity for North Carolina. We talk about momentum changing plays. That's a huge one where North Carolina could have taken it to a double digit lead and now an opportunity for Miami to cut into this. Ingram picked up foul number three. This is about the point in the game over and over tonight we've seen Miami hit a triple and crawl a little bit closer. Omir again lots of contact with Baycott off the fake and a foul on Armando Baycott and his third. And Norchad O'Meer has recognized he's not going to score over top of Armando Baycott. Baycott about four inches taller, has the wingspan. But what he is recognizing is that he can get the pump fake, use his pump fake to get Baycott into the air because he's going to try to block the shot and then does a great job using his body to lean in. And OB, I, I'm sorry. I thought I saw Larry Brown in the stands on that one. And again, the Larry Brown. If the Larry Brown is here on that last replay we showed, I thought I saw Larry Brown behind the basket. And I need our, our director Griff to make sure he gets a span of the cookie section to make sure that that confirms that is the great Larry Brown, another Hall of Famer in the building. Yeah. So much royalty being told that is absolutely 100% true. Davis gets a look from triple. No. Seven point game for Carolina. Miami just will not go away. And once again, now this is a mismatch. O'Meara has to go quickly. Great job by Seth Trimble. It'll stay on this end. And rightfully so, there's my guy, Larry Brown. They put him on the defensive end for North Carolina in the second half in the cookie section to make sure he's coaching them up from the end zone. Royalty all over the building. We've got Roy Williams on one side. And that is going to be North Carolina ball. With 8.17 to go. 
Larry still looks like a million bucks for many, many years among NBA coaches. Ageless, but how about the fact that he's back in the student section for North Carolina where he was 60 years ago when he attended the University of North Carolina as a point guard playing for the great Dean Smith. Whistle on the baseline and Ted Valentine stepping in. 8.06 to play. There it is. Royalty indeed. Robinson with his second foul. And one and one time for North Carolina. And I'm wondering if my guy Rasheed Wallace knows that Larry Brown is in town. Two people that Rasheed Wallace reveres more than anyone. The great Dean Smith and Larry Brown, who he won an NBA championship with with the Detroit Pistons. And he raves every time he talks about Larry Brown. I'm interested to know if she even knows that Coach Brown is in town. Well, heck, it, he's right here in the arena. It took us two hours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he kind of snuck in on us. Daycott front rims that one. Rebound tipped out. And it will be Miami ball. Both officials, Ron Gruber and Pat Driscoll, were looking at each other, and Pat made the call. Hubert Davis going to try to steal a few seconds right before the media timeout to get Armando Baycott out of the game, allowing Jalen Washington to come in and deal with North Chad O'Meara. O'Meara out of the double to Watson. Dribble on the attack, sucked away from behind by George, so it's out off Miami. 58 to 50 as we come down the stretch. We've got basketball royalty in the stands all over the place here in Chapel Hill tonight. And this one's still up for grabs. Five for 22 from the three in that game. That game's coming up. Top of the hour. Back to you, Obi. Kev, thank you very much. North Carolina with the ball on the inbounds. Miami's come back to earth a little bit from three after scalding it. Eight for 13 beyond the line in the first half. The two for eight in the second half. Here's a long one. Davis, yes. 30 on the nose now for RJ. And OB it was a Monday night when they were playing on this floor against Wake Forest. We saw RJ Davis go for a career high 36 points. It could be an even bigger night tonight. Cleveland had it batted back to him. A little fortunate there. Omir got another good look. Couldn't bear it. But that was a different shot for Omir. He, he questioned that shot. It's almost as whether he should have taken it or not. That one didn't look as fluid as his other shots had. North Carolina's been looking for the opening all night. Here's Davis again. Yes. And they found that opening. Here's their biggest lead, 14. Thirty-three points for R.J. Davis. As mentioned, thirty-six is career high. Over here on a spin, and he'll lay it in and draw the contact too. He'll be headed the line, looking for a three-point play. Sixty-four to fifty-two. And our NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts with the Pacers hosting Zion and the Pelicans. At 7.30 Eastern, then LeBron and the Lakers squaring off against the Clippers. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7. Amazing, OB. You've got the Pacers, who Larry Brown coached, and the Clippers, who Larry Brown coached as well. But one thing for certain, there's only one coach in the history of basketball to win both an NCAA and NBA championship, and it is that man right there, Larry Brown. So that is a major distinction to be the only one to have ever achieved that goal. Pass shipped into Baycott, and O'Meara will reach in and foul him, but that's four. Uh, Norchad O'Meara. And some fouls are more valuable than others. If you're North Chad O'Meara, and I know you do not want to see Armando Baycott dunk that. However, it's more important for you to be available for your team. You've got to let that one go and try to 
Reserve that foul. 6-10 remaining. And this game is not over. A 12-point lead absolutely can you can come back from that. But Omir picking up that fourth foul changes his aggressiveness throughout the remainder of this game. Dacon makes 80% at the line. 6-11 grad from Richmond. Oh, Missed the pair. Only one of four from the line tonight, though. Door is not closed yet on the Hurricanes with six minutes left. Everything running through number 15, Omir. Joseph got it back underneath. Watson connects. Great find from Bensley Joseph, who's also playing with four fouls. So you've got two of the starters for Miami in foul trouble. And they're two most important players at this stage of the game. Tennis for Baycott out on him. Out of Carolina. And it's going to be nine turnovers. And that's probably the fourth turnover in this game where we've seen North Carolina trying to force feed Baycott. You want to get him the basketball, but you've got to find the right angle, angle to be able to enter the basketball into the post. Joseph turns, fires, swishes in the three. Just like that. It's a seven point game. Benzie Joseph and Norton O'Meara trying to compete with those four fouls. And this is where it's tough for Miami on the defensive end of the floor. Joseph is 17 at 16 Saturday against Georgia Tech. They're trying to find an answer with all these injuries. Ingram putting the head down. Locks it up there. No, Baycott will keep it alive. And Baycott should just go right at North Channel Mir. He's got four fouls. You've got to recognize that. Davis knocked off balance. Hits it anyway. I'm not sure how. He has tied his career high with 36. Well, Obi, one of 14 on Saturday. You knew R.J. Davis was going to respond, but he may double his average here tonight. This could be a 40-plus point game for R.J. Davis. He does not look like he's going to slow down anytime soon. And this is still a game. This is not a blowout. So North Carolina is going to need his offense down the stretch. He another triple. Got it! George will kick outside. George fighting for the rebound for the second effort. So R.J. Davis with 39, a new career high. He has exploded tonight. Coming back here to Chapel Hill. He has been sensational. O'Meara will draw the foul before the shot with 3.48 to go. And a 13-point lead. You see the R.J. Davis show on display, a new career high, and he's hit seven three-pointers. R.J. Davis has found his groove here on his home floor to step back, knocking down the three, and we saw the George shrug maybe a little bit to his teammate. That expresses his commitment to his journey and respect to his heroes through art. The young pup looking into his reflection on the pond as more mature version of himself shows how he continues to find himself in understanding who he is. Also, his foundation is standing for something and not being afraid to use his platform for change. Got that quote from civil rights activist Malcolm X. He said, that is my idol. On there as well as a Black Panther. He said, the first black superhero. TMC is also a big part of that. The marathon continues. Going by the late Nipsey Hussle. So, no, the marathon is not finished for R.J. Davis. Another career high for him at 39. He is sprinting full steam ahead to make some history of his own, guys. He's spectacular here tonight. 14 out of 27, out of 10 from three. In less than 31 minutes, 39 points. I'll tell you what, the conversation is R.J. will go to the free throw line with the chance to become the first player to score 40 to North Carolina uniform since March 12th of 2011 when Harrison Barnes as a freshman went for 40 against Clemson in the ACC tournament. But after that one of 14 shooting performance, RJ's dad Bob called me from across the floor. Corey, come here, I need to talk to you about RJ's shooting performance. He said, oh, I'm on him. He's going to be in that gym tomorrow. That's 40. So he has tied the Smith Center record, which was set by Tyler Hansbro, 40 on February 15th of 06. And another foul shot coming. 
So on the verge of a record setting night as well. And there it is. He has 41. John Madry, our ace stats guy, has, when you get to 41 points, you got to flip the card over to get to that. He just flipped it over for the first time. And he was excited about that. John was happy he got to use that other side of the card. It's been a long time. The other side of the card. It's a big deal. Joseph back out for Olvier for a three. Yes. He's shown off his shooting touch throughout this night, and he's much more confident in that release, that first. We saw one where he didn't seem confident shooting the basketball. Great find by Elliot Cadeau. Oh. Not getting across, that's a violation. Well, the, the, it wasn't established in the front court. So when you look at the shot clock and it says 20, of course, 10 seconds have gone off, but the basketball had not been caught by Ingram yet. Great job by the officiating crew, keeping their eyes up, recognizing that because they split second maybe once a, once a season. Yeah, it doesn't happen yeah. often. Well, and you've got to be able to determine the difference because they can't have caught the basketball yet. Once they catch it, it's already established. So a violation, 72-62. Joseph launching, got it. And with the three pointers, they're hanging in. That's 20 for Joseph. The crowd encouraging to get in the car. That's a wow. turnover. Ingram with a travel. Now, here's my concern for North Carolina. Why is Harrison Ingram bringing the basketball up when you've got not only Elliot Cadeau, who's as fast as anyone on the floor, but also R.J. Davis, a great ball handler and free throw shooter. Those are the guys that you want. And you see Cadeau giving the basketball up to Ingram, and Ingram traveling on that, turning it over once again, keeping Miami in this game. Added away, but whose basketball will it be? Driscoll says it stays on this end with 305 to go Miami ball. Jim Laranega's team without two starters tonight. Nigel Pack and Wuga Poplar didn't suit up for the game. Each of them averaging 14 points a game, but they've got major contributions from other guys. 22 points out of their star, Norchad O'Meer. And 20 out of Joseph. And that'll go the other way. 3.04 to play. That's the nice find. And if Bensley Joseph could keep this in bounds, he would have had a easy layup. But you see that right foot stepping on the baseline. Another turnover. More pressure here from Miami. Now, this is what I want to see. Just get the basketball to RJ. Get out of his way. Allow him to make a play. Ooh. Someone should be open. When you've got two guys guarding one, you're going to play four on three on the backside. Miami scrambling, trying to stay in it. RJ Davis, a 41-point game. He slipped. Oh, time. Got the pass free. Oh, the timeout was called. Oh. So it wasn't as though there was contact. He went down on his own, but had the presence of mind to drop a dime to Armando Baycott. And North Carolina called the timeout. It looked like they were about to get a slam dunk. And we were about to have a sport to the top 10 play. He goes down on his own, breaks his own ankles, however, drops the dime. Armando's about to drop the hammer, and all of a sudden there's a timeout call. And we don't make sports center, OB. Conversely, RJ Davis is so good, he's breaking his own ankles <laughs> tonight. 2.39 remaining. North Carolina trying to gut one out here. They certainly did that over the weekend at Virginia. That was a rock fight victory, 54-44. to 44. Place they hadn't won in a dozen years, and they pulled it out on the road. And I would tell you this, with all that being said, I believe, look at Cormac Ryan yelling for the timeout once he sees once he sees R.J. go down, calling for the timeout. But I can tell you right now, if you think about the wins for Hubert Davis this season, who is now coaching in his 100th game as a North Carolina head coach, oh, Davis got it up there to beat the shot clock. Trimble went for the save and could not. If you think about the win, I can guarantee you that Hubert Davis will say that that win on Saturday at Virginia where they scored 54 points was the most satisfying victory of this season based upon the maturity and the way he watched his team grow up. He told us earlier today in shoot around, that's not a, a game that his team would have won the last couple of years. But when they would not allow 
for North Carolina to score. Carolina would not allow Virginia to score either. Joseph heating up a three. Baycock battling for the rebound and gets it to Davis. As we approach the two-minute mark here at Chapel Hill, North Carolina leading the ACC by a full game over the Duke Blue Devils, who fell to Wake Forest over the weekend. And it's been a night of nights for R.J. Davis with 41 points as he dribbles at the logo. Shot clock to five. And scrambling for that was Joseph trying to pick it free, but it's going to be North Carolina ball with almost no time to shoot it. 3.9. Oh, when you got R.J. Davis on your team, 3.9 is a lot. We watched North Carolina shoot around today, shooting half-court shots. They've also got a number of guys with this in their arsenal. Yeah, I'd say the way R.J.'s shooting it, he's within range right now, right around midcourt. Big hot, bouncing for Davis. Here's the shot. Great look and great execution by the heels to get that look with just 3.9. Cleveland to the right. No. And a foul. Ted Valentine did blow the whistle with 140 shot. And Davis picks up his second. And the right decision by Matthew Cleveland. He's got the size advantage when you have R.J. Davis guarding you. Put him on your back. Go to the post and try to take him to the rim. Not only to make him have to defend, but also try to pick up another foul. When a guy that's on a heater right now. Cleveland, good foul shooter, makes 80 percent. Triple out, and Cadeau back on the point guard for North Carolina. And Cleveland with another one coming. And another important free throw, because if you make this, you're Matthew Cleveland, you have an opportunity to set up your pressure with North Carolina has struggled with here as of late. A number of turnovers. Forced by Miami's full court defense. Eight nothing. Here's another one. Picked off. George will turn and fire. Got it. A three pointer. Oh, oh, yeah. it two point games. Yes, it's 72 70. Now, folks inside the building in a bit of a state of shock over the top for Ryan. 118 to go. An 11 nothing run for the Kings. Got up, set the screen. Davis gives it up. In the corner, Ingram. Here it comes. He can't hit it. Ryan diving for it and cannot save it. And it's going to be Miami ball with one minute to play. The Hurricanes with a chance to take the lead here. And give Jim Laranega and his staff a tremendous amount of credit. We talked about they were going to compete regardless as to who was on the floor. Now Miami with an opportunity to tie or even take a lead with a three-point field goal. One minute remaining here at Carolina. Miami's last lead was 9-8. to eight. Omir. Joseph. He's had a hot hand all night. Back for Omir. Big guy guarded. Up he goes, and he can't hit it. Rebounded by Davis. But if you're Miami right here, you don't have to foul. There's enough time for you to guard. You've got to get a stop. Hubert Davis wants a timeout to talk it over. There's enough time to get a stop and get the basketball back going down to the other end. And you'll see truly what Hubert Davis thinks about his team. And we know who's going to get the basketball. It's simply about how you get it. Armando Baycott defending Norchad O'Meara, who almost got that one to go. However, it doesn't go down, but still 36.3 seconds is an eternity in a one possession ball game. Yeah, we look at the reset. Miami has the all important possession arrow each side with a timeout. Coach Larinaga was doing exactly what you were doing, saying to his team, no fouls. You do not have to foul. You don't have to foul because you have more than enough time to play this out. There's a 17 second difference, so that's more than enough time, especially if you get a stop. If Miami gets a stop, most likely we will see Coach L call a timeout to get his team organized as to what he wants, and they will go quickly. But the important part is what, is, what is Miami's been missing all year is that defensive prowess. But Jim Laranega is a defensive-minded coach. I would not be shocked if we saw him change his defense in some way or another and throw a wrinkle at North Carolina that maybe they haven't seen thus far in this game. In Miami, what they're missing tonight is the other part of the story. 
And that is two huge players in Poplar and Pack unable to play, unable to dress for the game. And if they come into Chapel Hill against one of the best teams in the country and they have given North Carolina everything they can handle, they have been burying shots over and over again from three-point land to stay in it all night long. OB, there are people who actually left the building thinking that this game was over when North Carolina was up 13 that are now outside looking at the monitor. You can't get back in. They hating from outside the club, OB, right now. They're having to watch this game on a monitor to see how this one plays out. And Miami has absolutely played this last three minutes plus as well as you possibly can the 11-0 run since the last media timeout. Big on tying up the shoe. I believe he had to switch shoes. I think that was the difference. I'm colorblind, but he had the pink ones on earlier. And now, what we'll color those on you? 36.3 seconds to play in the game. North Carolina with the ball and leading by two. As Cormac Ryan will check it in. Outside the three, nine to get off a shot, and a whistle. And that's what you don't want. You don't want to send a 90% free throw shooter to the line without having to work for a bucket. And Ja'Kai Robinson trying to do the job defensively. However, just a little over aggressive. R.J. Davis being tended to. So he may be a little bloody tonight, but unbowed. 41 points for this man. He's also six for seven at the line. And shooting for North Carolina. Well, he's doubled his average now. 42, where his average dropped off a little bit. He needed to get back to 21.5. And I think he's probably done that in a major way here tonight. He's been spectacular, going for 43 points. In and out. Rebound oh. to him. Davis has it. Now you have to foul. And you've got to foul RJ. Ryan's also an excellent foul shooter. No foul yet. Trying to spin out of there. You have to foul if you're Miami. You can't continue to allow the clock to run Big down. Big with it. They let it wind all the way down to 8.8. Well, they lost precious seconds. Now, let's go back to this, Obi. North Chad O'Meara has four fouls. Bensley Joseph has four fouls. Ja'Kai Robinson has four fouls. That's why these guys didn't foul. But you have to understand at that point that time is more valuable than you being on the floor. You have to foul and give yourself a chance, especially after you give up an offensive rebound on a free throw. So this was a kick ball here. Never did get the foul. And Jim Laranega getting people into the lineup who can foul. So Bensley Joseph and Norchad O'Meara both coming off the floor so that they can foul immediately on the catch. Good to put it in. Over the top, Baycott. And he'll draw the foul by Cleveland. 8.1 to go. Mondo, a solid foul shooter, 80%. But only one of four on the evening. So hasn't been a good free throw shooting day for Mondo Baycott. Has it? R.J. Davis has missed a couple, which we don't rarely see from, see from him. This is two shots for Baycott. And the most important thing is just to get one out of this to make it a two-possession game. And Miami will take a timeout. And that'll be their last. Seconds remaining. North Carolina trying to pick up their 22nd win. I like that timeout by Coach Larinaga for two reasons. One, you ice Armando Bacon a little more. But secondly, you're allowing your team to know what they want to do on a miss or a make simply because you don't want to stop playing and allow North Carolina to be able to get to set their defense. But the story of this game has been R.J. Davis, who has been lights out. Started off the game knocking down a three on the first offensive possession for North Carolina, and he has not slowed down since. Attacking the basket, getting to 
to the rim, finishing, stepping back, knocking down threes over much taller defenders. And when they needed him most, R.J. Davis got the job done, doubling his average on the evening on the not only 21, but doubling up going to 42. He's had the night of nights for himself, a career high. I don't know what you were thinking coming into this game. Miami having lost six in a row, you know, had every right to have their heads down. Two starters out of the lineup. So many injuries this season to really submarine their season. Look what they've done tonight. Well, we know Jim Laranega well, so we knew they weren't going to go away without a fight. And Miami has absolutely put up a major fight here tonight. But this just shows how good the ACC is. It shows you a team that is 6-11 in the league can come into, on, into the home court of the team that is at the top of the league right now and make this a game without two of their starters. It shows you the great teams, the great coaches in this league. And that's been a great example of that here this evening with Jim Laranega's staff. Yeah, we look forward to the ACC tournament. You and I will be there in Washington, D.C. this year. It begins March 12, running through the 16th. So it'll be Baycott at the line with 8.1 seconds to play in the game, and he's shooting two. And that clangs off. The timeout worked. He misses the first one. Now this is the important one right here. Miami knows exactly what they want to do offensively off of a miss. And they have to go, they have to take a three. Miami out of timeouts. He missed the pair. Omer has it. Here's Joseph. And a reach and a whistle with five seconds to go. That's a great foul by Bacon to slow down Bensley Joseph. Of course, North Carolina can't get their defense set on that possession. And with North Carolina being a, such a great rebounding team, you don't necessarily fear giving up the offensive rebound. Baycott is fouled out. That's number five. And with five seconds to left, Bensley Joseph go. Bensley Joseph will go to the line. But Huber wants to get his entire team over to the sideline and you take full advantage of this 30 seconds that he has for the substitution. But if I'm Huber right now, I want to make sure I get Jalen Washington and maybe even Zayden High into the game to make sure we get this rebound. Joseph a career high, 21 points. He's an 84% foul shooter. Another one on the way. Trying to make this a one-point game. It looks like Miami's going to try to make this free throw. No, they don't. They try to miss it. They still rebound to Trimble and a foul. 73-71. That was missed intentionally. You saw Matthew Cleveland back way up to try to crash in to come up with the offensive rebound on that possession. Great job by Seth Trimble getting in the mix, picking up that board. I was shocked that we didn't see Hubert Davis go with a bigger lineup to secure that rebound, recognizing that Miami was going to try to miss that free throw. You can see the difference in the arc of the shot for Bensley Joseph. He wanted to put that higher to give it a chance to bounce off the rim. Seth Trimble doing a great job coming in and corralling that rebound. And Trimble, North Carolina's best on the ball defender. Not a big score, 63% at the line. And off the back iron. And this door still open. Even if you make this free throw for North Carolina, Miami still can go down. They've shot the three extremely well all evening long. They can still get a good look, and we've got a also mentioned, Matthew Cleveland has a number of game winners and game tires under his belt throughout his career. Yeah, back in his days at Florida State. Trimble with foul shot number two. And missed the ball. Oh. Rebound, knocked around, and a whistle with 2.6 to go. OB, I go back to the shoot around before the Virginia game when Miami went to Virginia. And Jim Laranega told his team not to practice bad habits. And he was telling them that on free throw box outs. And you see Jalen Withers going right around Keyshawn George on a free throw box out. 
which will end up most likely sealing this game for North Carolina. Foul number five for North Chad O'Meara, who had such a strong game. Baycott, of course, out as well. Jalen Withers stepping in, the 6'9 grad, to grab a huge rebound and draw the foul, the transfer from Louisville. And how about North Carolina, who makes more free throws than anyone in the ACC? 18 free throws a game. 10 of 19 from the free throw line. Withers around 80 percent. Second half, North Carolina just eight out of 17 at the line. Three point game, another one coming. And the way this game is gone, as Hubert Davis takes the timeout, if Jalen Withers makes this free throw, I would back completely away, line my team up on the sideline. As crazy as this thing is gone, you don't want to put yourself in a position to where you foul a three point shooter, possibly give him four. Hubert right now trying to figure out if he's going to foul or not. Let's check in with Kevin in the studio. OB, just want to remind our audience, underway right now in the Big 12. It is Big Monday. Baylor TCU currently about three minutes into the game. They are tied that game again on ESPNU. When we have a final in Chapel Hill, we'll pick up the action from that game in the Big 12. Back to you. Well, 2.6 seconds away, perhaps. North Carolina with a three-point lead at the foul line. Another free throw coming for Jalen Withers. Just made the first. After a giant rebound, North Carolina trying to squeeze out a hard-fought victory over a Miami team that has really played a terrific game under really difficult circumstances. Withers for number two. And made the pair. Completely get out of the way. Hubert Davis telling his team, don't foul. I'm not even contesting passes at this point. You can have it. Inbounded for Watson. He'll heave it and can't hit it. That's the ball game. North Carolina wins it. 75-71.